liberals. <laughs> my question for liberals, Ed, is when do more boycotts uh, of Rush Limbaugh's sponsors come? You know, there's been some yeah. racist garbage over the years. He's been racist on any number of occasions. And so you get a little bit uh, of a boycott or a little bit of a sense that, you know, the sponsors should be challenged as they would be on the other side of the spectrum if the shoe, so to speak, were on the other foot, on the foot of a Democratic talk show host. But you yeah. don't see any sustained organization on the part of liberals to go after Limbaugh. We'll see if that takes place in the future. All right, folks. Yeah, maybe they could uh, try to uh, destroy Rush Limbaugh for the 19,863rd time, uh, the way they're trying to destroy Condi Rice, uh, the way they uh, went after the CEO of Mozilla, you know, the left, the tolerant left who just wants to silence the opposition. Joining us now to talk about that and oh so much more uh, is uh, Christopher Hahn. He's host of The Christopher Hahn Show and uh, eventually will be joined by uh, radio talk show host and author of The Big Black Lie, Kevin Jackson. Uh, but uh, Christopher, say hello to uh, Liz and uh, great to see you again. Hello, how's everybody doing? Good, good, good. All right, so um, you agree with Jonathan Alter? They, there should be another boycott against the racist Rush Limbaugh and get him. And what is this hatred and vitriol on the left to get people? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of uh, boycotts and get people when it comes to these kind of things. And, you know, you don't like Rush, don't listen to Rush, and eventually his advertisers won't, uh, won't subscribe to him anymore if his ratings go down. And that's just the way it is. I think, unfortunately, what happens is when you raise these boycott issues, you raise people's po profile. And, and you actually put more attention on things that kind of are fading. And one of the things that has made Rush sustainable is that over the years, every couple of months, somebody's protesting them. And that, he does that on purpose. It's a marketing strategy, which has been very successful, one that I'm going to start trying. <laughs> Nobody can not like you, though, Christopher. <laughs> well, you know, talk to some of your listeners, man. <laughs> no, you, you, you're, way, you're way too likable. <laughs> I try my best. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> so, but I do think, I almost sometimes I hear these kind of boycott things. I think that people are in, in on it together. Like, I think that Rush calls Jonathan Alter up and goes, hey, uh, why don't you start a boycott of me? Uh, my ratings are down. You know, I mean, Steve Malzberg's creeping up on me in the, in the ratings. I need, I need some more, I need some play. Can you boycott me? I mean, I think that's what's happening. Christopher, I want to ask you, because I, I hear what you're saying, that the liberals, they tend to call for, for boycotts and they, they tend to get very, very angry and uh, about these things and they launch these kinds of campaigns. But, you know, uh, conservatives are often accused, as, as we've seen in recent events with Eric Holder, um, President Obama, uh, conservatives use the word race baiting, is, um, is that, I mean, he uses rhetoric that doesn't seem to be smart. So, I mean, do you think that, you know, when he uses rhetoric like this, that it can kind of be damaging to the Republican Party, that it can be damaging to conservatives? Because then it kind of gets associated, that Republicans get associated with being bigots. They get associated with being racist when, when we know that that's, that, that, that's not what they're about. Um, uh, there's a lot of, uh, most Republicans are not racist. There's racist right, look, on all ends of the, I mean, what, what do you think? Do you think that it's kind I, of doing a disservice to, look, to Republicans? I am, I, am, I am a true blue progressive, you know that. And, uh, and I don't think that most Republicans, the vast majority of Republicans are, have, are racist. But I, no, do, no. I do agree with what Congressman Israel said over the weekend, that there is a portion of the base <laughs> that is animated by issues of race. And, oh, geez. And, and I think oh, that over geez. the years... Since <laughs> Thank you, Richard Kevin. Jackson, Thank you, Kevin, for that. Kevin I mean, Jack, you can tell you Kevin Jackson series said, oh, geez. Uh, so, <laughs> I, so I guess, Chris, you'd also believe that there is a portion of Democrats who are racist, too, right? I believe, oh, yeah, yeah. I believe there are, but I don't think that they are as prevalent and as... as oh, as oh as no, things. no, no. Al Sharpton, was then, he never said anything. Greek homos, uh, calling David Dinkins the N-word, the great Democratic icon. No, he's not. Hey, no, nowhere I, near I, that, no. Let me tell you something. I, I call it out no matter who is saying it. And when it happens, you call it out. As, and as just, no, and what I, about Alex and, and, and whether it's on the left or the right, it needs to be called out. I've called out people over the years on both sides. Go ahead, things. Kevin. What about it, Kevin? Well, I mean, first of all, when, when every time the left has a comment, oh, well, I think there's a faction of racism on a Republican, there, there's not even an, an example, there's not even a question of there being a faction of racism on the left. These people are blatant racist. They put Planned Parenthood in black neighborhoods. Black schools are the worst on the planet. They're run by who? Progressives. When you look at everything that where the, the social fabric is being destroyed, it's around leftism. Blacks are, are 
disenfranchised to such a degree because of the left, yet they're constantly pointing the finger at the right, and then they go, oh, there's a faction of racism in the Tea Party. And as I argued with David Schuster on MSNBC, no black man's ever been hung at a Tea Party, but the KKK, who is a, a Democrat group, has hung black people. They persecuted yeah, Republicans. Yeah, Kevin, that was that was that was before the that was before uh, the forget forget the about party forget about all the changing of the party. That is nonsense. Even you know, today, when, I've when, given when, I've given the, you actual information today. When, when, yeah, 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 Kevin, Kevin, you're living in the past, okay? No, I'm not. Right no, I'm not. What it, is Planned Parenthood in the past? Are, are black party schools? Are black schools? All right, all right, all right. Kevin, 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 let Chris go for a second. Let Chris do uh, when, when, when the Civil Rights Act was passed under a Democratic president, Johnson, that portion of the Democratic Party left the Democratic Party. And in 1968, that's, that's President Nixon exploited that to get, get elected president. That's You're nothing happens, but talking friend. points. It's That's absolutely ridiculous. Line in America. It happens every 30 years. Chris, Chris, it was a, it was a majority. There was a greater percentage of, you know, Al Gore's father was one of the biggest racists. Uh, there was a majority, a, a greater percentage of Republicans in the House and Senate uh, voted for the Civil Rights Act than did Democrats, and without Absolutely. them, there would have been no Civil Rights Act. Different, as, was as, was the president, as was the president who signed the Civil Rights Act, he was a racist. The person who sponsored it I was Eric Dirksen. So look, I, I don't need to go that far back. I can give you things today that you can point at. Look at all the help that the Democrats have given the black, part, black people. Look at the help and tell me how great blacks are performing. We are down, and we don't own our own homes, we don't own our own businesses, and on and on. I don't need to go back that far. I think there's there's no question that racism exists today. I think we could all agree that it happened, sadly, but it's not a it's not a party issue. But I think another thing that we can agree on is somehow liberals have portrayed themselves as the party of acceptance. And Kevin, maybe you can weigh in on this. Why do you think they've been uh, successful in smearing conservatives? painting them as racist and what do you think the republican party needs to do to change this image well we need to fight it when when liberals you know that just the idea that that the left makes this comment oh there's a faction of racism in the republican party and then uh, you ask the question of him is there a faction of racism in the democrat party well yeah but not as much no there's a faction of racism in in the country there's a faction of racism in china there's a faction of racism all around the world that's not what you're focusing on we go to ball games, we go to grocery stores together. White people and black people and other people of all colors in America in this mosaic interact inter all the time, non-racially. If it was as racially uh, as bad as the Democrats uh, lay it out, we'd all be killing each other, but we don't. So what we should be let doing me, is we should be- Let me give you an example of I'd, I'd like to finish, I'd like to finish. What we should be doing is we should be challenging the left about this. All right, you know, uh, Chris, um, when Eric Holder said no one's ever been treated, that no attorney general or no president's ever been treated the way he and Obama have, you know, right, right away, Ari Fleischer said, what, are you kidding me? Look at what they did to Alberto Gonzalez and George W. Bush. Look what they still do to both of those guys. Uh, look what they did to Janet Reno. Look what they did to Clinton. They impeach him. This race card just falls very, very short and shallow. I think there's been a lot of disrespect towards this president from members <laughs> of Congress, starting with the you lie guy. Really? Uh, and when they called, but when Nancy Pelosi called Bush race? an idiot? You think that what disrespect that? <laughs> has to do with race or does it have to do with policy? I think it has to do with this guy having no respect for him and, he, and I do think that it has something to do with the president's race. <laughs> see, see, but see, <laughs> that's exactly what so, we're Yeah, but see, this is exactly have what, no we're, what, we're, what we're talking about. No, you know, let me, let me tell you the and, lack and of respect for race. Legitimate president. The lack of respect for race comes when people like Chris believe that they need to protect somebody that's that serving at the highest office of the land that they need to give him some different gauntlet of protection because he's black. Look, I'm black. I don't nah, believe I don't Barack think, Obama. All right, guys, is guys, black guys. Uh, Kevin Jackson and Christopher, we're out of time, but wait because it's going to extend to sexism and, and, and protecting Hillary Clinton. And anytime you disagree with her, you're a sexist. That's coming uh, down the pike, too. She, Christopher, she thank got, you, host of the Christopher Hunt Show. Take care, uh, take care. and uh, Kevin Jackson and Liz. Great to be with you. And, great to be uh, with great, you. Great really to great to be here. Oh, no, but we're not done because we got the next interview coming up. I'm sorry, my mistake. Hank Shankov. Yes. Yes. All right. So stay, stay tuned for that. Hank. He's coming on Newsmax Television. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show.